Hello and welcome to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today I'm going to be looking at ready mixed or convenience greens. These ready mixed greens have had quite a bad press over the years. You're often told it's better to mix your own greens and of course if you like mixing your own greens that's fine but convenience greens are exactly that. They are convenient but to be honest they are a little bit lurid and a little bit unsightly straight from the tube. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can modify them to turn convenience greens into the perfect greens for your landscape painting. I recommend the four greens that I've chosen for various different jobs and they are sap green, perylene green, hooker's green dark and viridian hue. And I'm going to mix each of these first with raw sienna, then with burnt sienna and then with Payne's grey and neutral tint. And I'm hoping that you'll see that even from the few hues that I'm producing here that you could literally find hundreds of different subtle shades just from these four greens and from the modifying colours that I'm using. So I've sped up my swatching process a little bit because it can get a little bit boring literally watching paint being swatched out and then watching it dry. So from left to right is sap green, um, perylene green, hooker's green and then viridian. Below that I've just squeezed out my raw sienna and my burnt sienna and then I'll um, squeeze out a little bit of Payne's grey and neutral tint. I'm going to use a small flat brush and first of all I'm going to um, create three swatches just getting light, starting off at sort of a, a mid value and getting lighter of the base colours as they are straight from the tube. So that's sap green. This is perylene green, which is technically a black, but it's a beautiful dark green. It's a lovely colour. The next one is hooker's green, beloved by Elwyn Crawshaw and various other traditional loose watercolour artists. You can see it just looks a little bit vivid straight from the tube and viridian which is sort of an emerald green and this is very strong certainly doesn't look like the sort of green that you could use in a landscape but I'd argue that all of them are beautiful colors to mix so first things first I'm going to mix the sap green with a little bit of raw sienna and you can see that that's kind of made it a little bit earthy. And now the burnt sienna. And that's warmed it up a bit. We could push that even further, almost close to a brown if we continued. But let's, um, for the sake of this experiment, I'm just going to show you a few of the different combinations that you can have. So this is raw sienna mixed with the perylene green and we've got more of a sort of a, um, a sort of a spruce green, a forest green. Now I've moved on to mixing raw sienna with the hooker's green and again much earthier. Straight away we get these sort of lovely natural greens they're starting to look really subtle you could imagine using these in a landscape painting and really having some lovely subtle changes so that's burnt sienna mixed with the perylene green now some burnt sienna mixed with the hooker's green and we're getting these beautiful forest greens Now this is the wild card, the Viridian. See what happens when we mix this with some raw sienna. It's much cooler than the other colours, sort of more minty, if you see what I mean. But I think the raw sienna has already improved it a bit. It's more of a tropical colour. It could work nicely for sort of tropical paintings. Now the burnt sienna. And here we are, we've much more, we've reduced it, its uh, chroma and brought it down to quite a desaturated and subtle colour. And it didn't take much. So 
So now this is adding Payne's Grey to our base greens. Payne's Grey is a neutral colour, as is neutral tint. And what happens when we mix these with the greens is it desaturates the colour and makes it sort of, it dulls it down and it takes out a lot of the intensity and we get these really beautiful dark colours. The um, It's almost black now, um, the perylene green, now that we've added Payne's Grey to it. The hooker's green is still holding its own. We've got a nice sort of quite deep sort of forest green, which is, has got a lovely sort of hue to it. But then the Viridian's quite surprising. The Payne's Grey really tones it down, but it's got a kind of clarity to it. I really like that particular shade. I'm just going to clean that lot off of the palette quickly because the last experiment I want to try is mixing the colours with neutral tint and just see how different the colours are um, compared to mix them, mixing them with the Payne's Grey. Again, these will desaturate the greens. They look fairly similar with the sap green. Let's move on to the perylene green now. And again, this is taking it down to almost a grey. There's a hint of green now, but the neutral tint has greyed out the green completely. And with the hooker's green, that's pretty much greyed out as well. I think there's a little bit more green left. And now lastly, the um, Viridian. And it looks almost like a true spruce green, really beautiful. So I hope you can see that just a few minutes of swatching these colours and modifying these convenient greens with raw sienna, burnt sienna, neutral tint and Payne's grey has given us a really wide variety of beautiful natural greens that would work well um, in any sort of circumstance. So I'll just label my swatches and I would recommend you do this if you swatch out lots of colours don't forget to label um, them as you go so you don't forget what you've mixed together to create the colours. Then I shall stick this into my swatching sketchbook as a record of these beautiful colours and then I can always go back to this swatching sketchbook and if I'm looking for a particular shade of green that I'm struggling to mix then I can look through my swatches and sort of pick out more or less exactly the colour that I want or something pretty close and that gets me started uh, straight away being able to mix the green that I'm looking for. Of course, there are plenty of other convenience greens that you can buy and I recommend trying those out in the same way, trying them out particularly for landscapes with raw sienna and burnt sienna because they really do create these more natural looking greens and then for shadow colours um, and darker greens then introduce a neutral such as Payne's Grey or neutral tint. Um, the only reason I use these four is because um, two of them are my favourites, which is sap green and perylene green. And just recently, I've got to like hooker's green. And I thought it would be interesting to try something as vivid as viridian and see how that worked. I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you have any favourite convenience greens, then please um, let us know in the comments. It would be really interesting to hear from you about that. And if you're interested in more about swatching and colour theory, then take a look at our colour swatching playlist, which you can find here on YouTube. So thank you very much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone who supports us on Patreon. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.